Hi guys, this is IGCSE O level chemistry paper 22 November 2019 question 21. A method used to make copper to sulfate crystals is shown. Place dilute sulfuric acid in a beaker, warm the acid, add copper to oxide until it is in excess, filter the mixture, evaporate the filtrate until crystals start to form and leave the filtrate to cool. Okay, so this is the entire procedure of preparing a soluble salt from an insoluble oxide. What are the purpose of steps three and four? Step three is add copper to oxide until it is in excess and four is filter the mixture. So step three is to make sure that all of the sulfuric acid has reacted with copper to oxide. So all of the acid had uh, to ensure all the acid has reacted. This eliminates options C and D and to obtain solid copper to sulfate, no, copper to sulfate is soluble, so it is obtained as the filtrate. But step four says filter the mixture. This is to remove the excess of copper to oxide. This makes option B the correct option for this question. Question 22. Lead to sulfate is an insoluble salt. Which reaction produces a mixture? from which lead to sulfate is obtained by filtration. So adding solid lead to carbonate to dilute sulfuric acid. No, you do not use an insoluble salt to produce an insoluble salt. What you do is you use a soluble salt and an acid to produce an insoluble salt. So this is incorrect. Next, adding solid lead to hydroxide to dilute sulfuric acid. Again, we are using an insoluble salt to produce an insoluble salt. So this method is incorrect. Next, adding metallic lead to dilute sulfuric acid. Again, we are using a solid to produce the salt, which is an incorrect way of going about it. So this is incorrect as well. And adding aqueous lead to nitrate. Yes, this is an aqueous salt to produce dilute sulfuric acid. Yes, lead to nitrate would react with sulfuric acid to produce solid lead to sulfate, which can be removed by filtration. So the correct option for this question is option D. Question 23. Helium is a noble gas. Which statement about helium is correct? It has eight electrons in its outer shell. No, it has two electrons in its outer shell because it belongs to the first period and the first shell can only contain two electrons. Next, it is a diatomic gas. It is a noble gas. It is monoatomic. It is reactive. It is a noble gas. It is unreactive. And it is used to used for filling balloons. Yes, it is less dense than air. So it is used to fill balloons and it is non-flammable. So option D is the correct option for this question. Question 24. Which pair of elements react together most violently? So we've got chlorine and lithium, chlorine and potassium, iodine and lithium, and iodine and potassium. So for halogens, the reactivity decreases down the group. So chlorine would be more reactive than iodine. So this eliminates options C and D. And for group one metals, the reactivity increases down the group. So potassium would be more reactive than lithium. Eliminating option A, making option B the correct option for this question. Question 25. Iron 2 ions can be oxidized to iron 3 ions by hydrogen peroxide. Which statement explain, explains why iron is a transition element? Iron is a transition element because it can be oxidized. No, all metals can be oxidized. Iron is a transition element because it has variable oxidation state. Yes, this is a property of transition elements. All other metals have a single oxidation state. Iron is a transition element because it takes part in redox reactions. No, there are other metals that can take part in redox reactions as well. So this is not the reason why it is a transition element. Iron is a transition element because it reacts with chlorine. There are other transition elements or other elements. In fact, group 1 elements, sodium, potassium, lithium can react with chlorine. So 
this is not it. This is not the explanation of why iron is a transition element. Therefore, the correct option for this question is option B. Question 26. Some properties of substance X are listed. It conducts electricity when molten. So it can be a metal, it can be an ionic compound. It has a high melting point. Again, it can be a metal, it can be an ionic compound. It burns in oxygen and the oxide dissolves in water to give a solution with a pH of 11. So this is a metal oxide and a metal oxide means that this element or substance X is a metal. What is X? A covalent compound? No. A macromolecule? No. A metal? Yes. An ionic compound? No. The third property it eliminates it from being an ionic compound. The first and second properties are true for both metals and ionic compounds. So the correct option for this question is option C. Question 27. Which row describes the uses of aluminum, copper, and mild steel? So aluminum is used in aircraft bodies. Yes, car bodies, no. That would be steel. Electrical wiring, that would be copper. And food containers, yes. Next, copper is used in electrical wiring, yes. Cooking utensils, yes. Aircraft bodies, no. And mild steel is used in car bodies, yes. Electrical wiring, no. Food containers, no. And cooking utensils, no. Since the only row with all the correct uses is present in option A, this makes option A the correct option for this question. Question 28. The properties of four metals are listed. Metal W does not react with dilute hydrochloric acid. That means it is less reactive than hydrogen. So Hydrogen is more reactive than W. Metal X reacts with dilute hydrochloric acid. So metal X is more reactive than hydrogen. Metal Y displaces metal X from an aqueous solution of its ions. So Y is more reactive than X. And metal Z reacts with water and dilute hydrochloric acid. So since it is reacting with water and dilute hydrochloric acid, it is very reactive. So Z is the most reactive metal. And the question asks, what is the order of reactivity of the metal? So the most reactive would be Z, eliminating options A and B. Then we would have the least reactive being W, which is there in both the options. Then the one before W would be X. So this eliminates option C. And the one before X should be Y. Therefore, option D is the correct option for this question. Question 29. This statement about extraction of aluminum from aluminum oxide is correct. Aluminum is formed at the positive electrode during electrolysis. Positive electrode is the anode and oxygen is made at the anode, not aluminum. So this is incorrect. Pure aluminum oxide is dissolved in molten cryolite. Yes, this is done so that its melting point decreases. Pure aluminum oxide is electrolyzed using aluminum as the positive electrode. No, aluminum is not used as a positive electrode. Carbon is. And pure aluminum oxide is not electrolyzed. Pure aluminum oxide dissolved in cryolite is oxidized. So this statement is incorrect as well. And the last one says, Pure aluminum oxide is heated with carbon to form carbon dioxide and aluminum. No, aluminum is more reactive than carbon and will not be extracted by reacting it with carbon. Therefore, the correct option for this question is option B. Question 30. River water contains soluble impurities, insoluble impurities and bacteria. River water is made safe to drink by filtration and chlorination. This statement is correct. Filtration removes bacteria and insoluble impurities and chlorination removes soluble impurities. No. Chlorination removes bacteria and filtration only removes insoluble impurities. So this is incorrect. 
Filtration removes insoluble impurities and chlorination kills bacteria. Yes. Next, filtration removes soluble and insoluble impurities. No. And chlorination kills bacteria. That part is correct. Filtration removes soluble impurities and bacteria. No. And chlorination removes soluble impurities, insoluble impurities. No. Completely incorrect. Therefore, option B is the correct option for this question.